so as I stream on Twitch, there is a plan for me. Things that I want to do, things that I want to provide content on, things that I want to create content out of, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But as I built this schedule, which is the first time I've ever built a long-term goal schedule thing for me in my entire life, it got me thinking about the day-to-day. And do I actually take this serious or do I not? And in that regard, is are all of the things that I have lined up just ideas for YouTube videos or am I actually going to provide like things you can rewatch? Am I going to do memes, TikToks, things like that? Like, am I going to, let's say, have 30 days of poetry where I try to create a new poem every single day? Like, am I going to create series? Am I going to diversify my portfolio? But that has nothing to do with the title of this video and the thumbnail. So what gives? I... I more or less... I more or less realize something. No, okay, we can't do it today. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Thought I could do it today. I thought to myself, will there ever be a runaway or a run out of things, of topics in your field of knowledge that you will talk about? Will you fall into a rut of let's play a game every every day until like we get through that? And like, are we going to build a community where different things will supersede what I normally do? Because I feel like that's giving up a very big part of myself. And I'm nowhere near anyone else, but like I can't not admit that I've been growing. So these are questions that I have to ask and I have to ask now because I already made a video on this called The Five Emotional uh, Emotional Hurdles You Will Face as a content, as a new content creator. And like I could just watch my own content to answer my questions, but I'm not going to do that. I want to talk to you today about Martin Luther King. Not really, but the first thing we're going to see is a picture of him, so might as well make it about him. I refuse to accept the view that mankind is so tragically bound to the starless midnight of racism and war that the bright daybreak of peace and brotherhood can never become a reality. I believe that unarmed truth and unconditional love have the final word. And then this motherfucker says, CRT and Idpol have been fully embraced by one side and will continue to create races on both sides until given up. And you know what pissed me off? As I started like looking and looking and looking, and then I was like, it's motherfucking Mr. Girl. (laughs) Ah, And that leads me to the entirety of today's segment. It was Mr. Girl. Look, look, look. Look. I have always posed the question. (laughs) Obviously, but. I have. I have posed the question. Why on earth? Do people weaponize Martin Luther King Jr.'s words? Now, we could take a long, long, long look at each of the uses, each of the plagiarisms, how it has infected the um, American education system. 
and how that has created a ripple effect for people talking about black issues. We can do that. We can do that. We can do that. But today, I'd like to actually talk to you seriously. No gimmicks. No. I know it took me five minutes to get here, but no gimmicks. No expression. Just me, you. Conversation for a little bit. I want you right now to picture your life. Take a look at it. Take a look at everything that you've been through and ask yourself, how did you end up here? Like right here with me. How did you end up here? Do we ask ourselves why we ended up in the spaces that we're currently in? Now, for some of you, the answer is easy. It's logical. It was a decision made. Uh, you might know me personally. You might have things that you want to, but circumstances had to come to play. Different barriers, different feelings, different emotions. Something had to have you take a look outwards and say, this is what I want to spend my time on. Has to be, because you ended up here. Everything that you have been through, whether you like me or don't like me, has led you here. And that's important to consider when thinking about the rising emergence of a wider breadth of black education. I feel like we really do play doomer with minorities' educations because, oh, they live in a hostile environment, you know, they could be mistaken for a gang member. You got to be careful when you go outside. You never know who's popping. Like, you start walking, you start talking a different way. And it bothers me when people not in that situation, even if they've lived around it, even if they've empathized with it, my problem becomes more of a conversation on how much ownership do you really have in the state of the way things are. And it's funny that people weaponize MLK. You should be judged by the content of your character, not by the color of your skin. And it's like, yeah. So why didn't you do that all that time ago? What made you realize it was wrong? What was left from what you built when you thought it was correct? And from there, can we possibly have a discussion on how you ended up here? Was there a, a misdirection, maybe? Your parents believed for the longest time that, like... I don't know, like, Mexicans were weird, like. There are beliefs that they had that you did not carry, whether personal or ideological. You disagreed at some point. How'd you end up here? How'd you end up here? What took you so long? Because Martin Luther King had more than one quote. And there are a lot of people on the internet now who have, are trying to say more than one thing. And they have to play around with these algorithms because they don't look like these people who are at the top. They don't look bright. They don't look chiseled. They don't go, dude. They're not super excitable. They're not you. And that forces you to compare yourself to other people. And if you're forced to compare yourself to other people, then sadly, the color of a person's skin affords them for some reason, some underlying privileges that just make life a little bit easier. Just 
a little bit easier enough for you to slip right in that hole. For you to slip right down that informational, like, bombardment that makes you actually think that these problems cannot be solved with the unity of you and I. But you weaponized Martin Luther King's words to say, why can't we all just get along? But then continue these institutions that completely defeat the point of what the words you're trying to echo are saying. Because you judge Martin Luther King by his skin. That's why you only know one or two quotes from him. You do not agree with his ideology. It's a communist. Like, you don't agree with his solutions. You shot him. Like, how far, how, how deep you want this to go? How far, how, how, how much more explanatory do you need me to go with this? We effectively create what we envision and we all tell ourselves somewhere down on this, on this, on this leftist path that like morality is subjective. And it is. I can't help you understand why people don't see it that way. That's my biggest thing. That's my biggest like problem is that every time I try to like express myself in the way where like if you got a shred of empathy, that man is spitting. And I'm now I'm in a space where people who don't operate like that, that don't have that, that, that nuance, that don't have that, and they get further being that ignorant to take those words because it's funny. Because it's funny. Because you could spend all of your time being a dick or you could actually try to move something forward. Why is that popular right now? And I feel like it speaks down to a bottom layer of how people think when or what people what synapses go off in people's minds when black people speak. At what juncture are you actually listening to this person or you're just playing the victim? It's like, no, I have concrete problems with concrete solutions. I'm giving you the guide work here. You are the white man. Take it and just do it. Now nah, we can't do that. OK, thanks. You can't build affordable housing. We're just going to burn down the rest of the housing that's here. But won't that displace your people? These these Democrat-run cities, these Democrat-run cities. Yes, we watched that Trump shit yesterday. Ooh. That man fell off so hard. That man fell off so hard. These Democrat run cities. Just say black people. Just like, you see what I mean? About skipping the subterfuge, reading between the lines. Every segment I do is always connected and I never upload them in order. So like, you get the point disjointed anyway. Like, yo, my last brain cell up in there, yo. Oh my God. Hey. I'm just trying to figure out why the black man is seen like a wise man. Like, that's the guy who's going to spit that truth. And I guess we're all just going to have to pretend to listen to him because he thinks he's like, it's all code. It's all code. It never stopped. That's the point of this. When it comes to MLK's words, when it comes to all the points that I've brought up and all the questions that I have that I need answers to, that's the whole point of it. Why do you not understand that I can read that code? Why do you not value my opinion to be able to read that code? And the problem that I'm starting to have is that the more articulate I get in being able to dissect your arguments with your little proofs and your little facts, the more I can actually get to the underlying concepts of why you think the way that you think. And maybe from there I can empathize with you and, you know, shift your paradigm. But if you're going to continue to put up this front, like these are the actual activities that make you, I don't know, feel great or feel big. Like, don't do that with black people. Just stop. Just stop. This is a place where you don't have to do that. This is a place where you don't have to do that. I don't know who needs to hear this, but this is a place where you don't have to do that. This is your marketplace. This is your ideals. You win by judging who has the more views. You don't have to do that. You don't. 
have to do that. 